world. When you hear about slavery for 400 years, for 400 years, that sounds like a choice. <laughs> like, you was there for 400 years and it's all of y'all? What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Black people have been discriminated against in America since before it became a country. Black people have been labeled as property, separate but not equal, savages, thieves, murderers, and lazy over its 243 year history. Initially being the backbone of the construction of the country and its primary source of labor, black people have always faced the break of discrimination simply because of the skin color and abilities. They were hanged, whipped, beaten, sexually assaulted, impregnated, sold, and separated from their families for the 246 years that slavery was legal here in the United States. The first set of slaves were brought to America in 1619, when approximately 20 Africans were brought to Port Comfort, Virginia. Slavery didn't officially end in all states until December 1865, when the 13th Amendment was ratified. What do you have to lose? You're living in poverty. Your schools are no good. You have no jobs. 58% of your youth is unemployed. And people believe that, specifically white people believe that, Racism is a thing of the past. They don't believe that it exists in modern society. When, in reality, black people and many people of color go through many different types of discrimination daily. Um, black people can be discriminated against in the leisures of their own home, driving, or simply just being around in public. My best idea of trying to get this message passed that racism, racism still purely exists in modern society today is to give you testimonies of many different people and many different backgrounds and um, try to show you how they've gone through discrimination even in the simplest of times um, and I will also give a testimony myself hopefully you'll understand that racism is not a thing of the past and it's still it still is active in society and every day that we ignore it and we pay no mind to it is a day that we've allowed for racism to still continue in our society and it will affect many different generations after us if we don't take a stand out. Of course, being a rather large black man, uh, a couple of years ago I was at Wingstop and this little girl was behind me and she kept staring at me and you know pretty tall big guy and um she said daddy daddy that's a big black nigga right there so her dad looked at her he kind of spanked the bottom a little bit and that was it he tried to apologize whatever which was cool but that more than anything let me know that you're raised into it. You have to be taught that. I was in my um, computer science class with my other African-American friend and we were just working and talking, getting our classwork done where um, a uh, Asian, one of our Asian classmates decided to use the n-word on multiple occasions that we asked him to stop and the only reason that he stopped us was us by telling the teacher so there was one time i was visiting my family in pickens mississippi i was a little elementary girl um, pickens is a small rural country town in mississippi where the majority of the population is black uh, my aunt took me to the store and the stores were owned by all white people. And so I was walking around the store, picking up things, doing the same thing I always did when I was with my parents. And the store owner uh, came up to me and started accusing me of stealing things. Um, imagine, you know, I was a little girl and this woman is saying I was stealing things. Um, I was terrified, I was scared. Um, I knew it was a lie. I started crying. Um, I told my aunt I wasn't taking anything. And at that moment, I recognized that it wasn't um, 
that she had anything on me, you know, um, it was because of my race. It was because I was black. And I saw the anger in my aunt um, and how she responded back to the store owner. And so that has stuck with me for, for life, you know, uh, realizing that there's a huge difference in race. <sighs> One day when I was younger, my friend and I went to Walmart with his mom and uh, she let us run around. And we were just running around like kids do. And um, we decided to go to the jewelry section. And we were just laughing and stuff. And I noticed out the corner of my eye that there was this white lady. And I just noticed she was looking at us at first. I noticed as we started walking around, she just kept following us until we decided to leave the jewelry section. And she, I could see her. As I turned to look at him, I could see her at the corner of my eye, standing there with her hands on her sides, just watching us as we walked away. A time that I had to encounter something like a racial experience, I was in my sophomore year of high school, and it was an English teacher that um, actually was across the hall from my other class. I did the announcement, so she talked about me to her class, called me all types of names, said I sounded ghetto, and she didn't even know who I was because I was over the intercom. And I think that was really the only experience that I had. An instance of racism that I experienced occurred once when my niece and I were leaving a local resort. Um, a white pickup truck with a Confederate flag on it approached us driving behind us and started to immediately blow its horn. And um, so I'm under the assumption that he's trying to pass. Um, he kept getting closer and closer. And as I look in my rearview mirror, he's actually pointing his middle finger up at us and just doing kind of just mean gestures. Either way, once we came upon a point where he could pass, I slowed down to allow him to pass. And at this point, he pulled the gun out and pointed it at my, myself and my niece into our vehicle. Um, I immediately slammed on brakes so that he could pass and we resumed our traveling and we captured the license plate number to report to the police. I'm grateful that it didn't result in any one of us losing our lives. Where I had a middle school teacher who offered to pay for my expenses to be able to play summer league basketball and she saw my skills and she said I want to offer to pay for you to be able to play for AAU and so fast forward um we was in class and I was acting up one day and giving her a hard time and she said to me I don't know why you're acting like this especially after everything I've done for you now, in my head, to me, it felt like I was not only being blackmailed, but it felt like she believed that she was given to a charity case, even though I never asked her to pay for me to play middle, for me to play summer basketball. And so in that situation, I felt like if I was of another race, that she probably would have never offered to pay for me to play summer basketball. I was in my 10th grade pre-AP class when my white teacher addressed me and the only other African-American student in the class about telling the class how soul food is made. And when the rest of the, the class was like, well, you can't ask them that, she was like, oh no, I'm not racist. I have black friends. But that wasn't even the worst thing. Um, we had to write a poem about this book that we read in class, and I thought that I did exceptionally well. But when I got my poem back, I realized that I had failed it, and written all over the paper it said, cite your sources, cite your sources, this is plagiarized, you don't use this in your everyday language. And I went up to her and I was like, I am very intelligent, um, I don't have to speak um, using big words in my everyday language to appease others. Um, and I said, I didn't need to cite more sources because I didn't use sources. And when I tried to go to the principal's office to report her, she was like, oh, no, 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 I'll just change your grade. And she gave me the 100 that I deserved and decided to act like the situation never happened. 